Before we move on, though, we need to uh, we have a sad goodbye to Tony's niece. Uh, Don Khaleesi Sisto passed away unexpectedly yesterday, and I thought it would be nice to have a drink in her honor. She um, was one of those amazing, amazing women. She would have been 40 today, um, and she has suffered from cancer for many, many, many years. She had a rare form of soft tissue carcinoma that um, when she was 28, she was diagnosed with breast cancer and had a double mastectomy, and then she was fine for many, many years. Everybody, she'd almost gotten a clean bill of health, and then all of a sudden they found a cancer on her lung. She had a lung removed, and then a year later she had part of her liver removed, and she has been free and clear for over a year. We saw her for Christmas. She, she looks, looks phenomenal. Fantastic. Went through all the chemo, and then suddenly she went in for a checkup, and they found a tumor on her heart, and it grew quickly, and they went in and operated on Friday, and then unfortunately, because of all the I mean, her body's been ravaged to lose a lung and to lose breast and to lose part of your liver and then to lose part of your heart and try to survive. And she fought valiantly until the day before she turned 40. What an amazing, amazing woman. She had a massive heart attack and passed away. And, I mean, nobody expected it because she's survived everything else. I mean, I think we all kind of figured that she was this superwoman because that's the way she acted. That's And, and unfortunately, um, we lost a fantastic woman. But... um, I have poured out, I kind of have picture her having a drink, drink on a tropical island somewhere. And so in her honor, um, I brought this rum uh, from St. Martin, toast Dawn, to Dawn. Dawn Khaleesi Sisto, rest in peace, darling. We miss you. We did not get stuck in traffic. We made it here. Unfortunately, not a lot of other people did on this Wednesday as we are live at Comedy Sports in Philly, CSZ Philly, the home of Comedy Sports, inside the Adrian Theater at 2030 Sansom Street. Four months since we started the show here. And we have a very special anniversary guest. Hello, I'm Tony Bruno. Thanks for all the folks who came by tonight. I just found out that 99% of the people here tonight are here because they walked. Because apparently there's been all kinds of major traffic accidents and road closures in and around the center city Philly area. A lot of people are tweeting us and contacting us, telling us that they just said, screw it, I'm going home. I was trying to get there tonight, but we're not going to make it. Tony Bruno, Miss Robin is here. Natalie Eganoff is here. Even Joe Corrado Joe couldn't Corrado make it. Joe Corrado couldn't make it. <laughs> but I believe he came up, he went to the Jersey Shore to do some real estate stuff today, and he couldn't get back. You know why? Because it was a beautiful day. That's why it was 75 yeah, he's, degrees. He's stuck on the beach with a drink in his hand. Exactly. exactly. Stuck. The weather's boring that crazy time of the year in a lot of places in the country. You go from 75 one day, and then you have the heat on the next. You get in your car, and you're turning the air conditioner on the next day, and then the heat's on in the house. Natalie is here. Uh, and Natalie's usually up there with Luigi up in the God mic position. I, I am. This but, is an interesting perspective. What do you I think? I like it. I like it. You like it up yeah, there? Yeah, it's. I, it might get hot though. I feel it does, the heat it does already. Get hot. It does yeah. get hot. And last week it was warm, and then it got cold and miserable, and it was snowing and cold and rainy and windy and miserable, and now it's nice again. So that's what happens. But anyway, we're gonna have a fun show tonight because we mentioned one of our guests is back. He was here for our very first show here, and he dazzled the crowd, and he was appearing at the Franklin Institute. For that weekend, which was the Thanksgiving weekend, and he sold out the place with his new tour called... He was so popular that they asked him back, and he is now here for how many, how long? He's got an extended run now. Yeah. So he's going to be appearing at the Franklin Institute. The show is called Think Again. He's a mentalist, he's a magician, he's a psychologist, he's a hypnosis, a hypnotist. He's an ist. He does everything. (laughs) He's an amazing, amazingly talented guy. He does a video blog every day. Every single day, he vlogs, he calls it, and he posts it on his website, and you can go check him out. He's going to be here in a second. we got a lot of stuff to talk about, Luigi. In fact, next week, we are going to take the show on the road. We will not be here next week. We'll be in Houston, Texas for the Final Four. How about that? That's going to be great. It's going not to be on great. Wednesday, though. Not on Wednesday. We'll be there Thursday and Friday. We are tra- Wednesday is a travel day. We will get there on Thursday. We are going to be at Nick's place well, in Houston. Wait, don't step on Dino. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> Let him sing a little bit. Everybody so we're going to be doing live podcast down. next Thursday night from a sports bar I'm in Houston, Texas called Nick's Place. Not Nick Papa Giorgio. Not from Nick. Yuma. From He's Yuma. from Yuma, Arizona. <laughs> we're going to Houston, Texas. He's in software. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you and Natalie both immediately knew. 
who Nick Papa Giorgio was. That's, how you, who it's, would not it's know? It's Vegas Vacation, man. Vegas I know it, but not everybody has seen Vegas Vacation, have they? Of course. I, 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 and no one that I'm friends with should have not seen it. Exactly. I don't, associate, I don't associate with people that haven't right. seen Vegas Vacation. Who, who, who don't know who Nick Papa Giorgio is. Well, this, isn't, this isn't Nick Papa. This guy's actually a self-made, successful guy, not a guy who's defrauded casinos into letting him in on the range. Oh, I don't know, man. He won four cars, dude. He could hire for himself. <laughs> We're going to talk to Nick later on tonight. Yes, yes Nick's going to join us next hour from Houston. We're going to have a lot of fun. This is our now, first. We have, we have tons of fans out in Houston who are already excited about us coming out there. <laughs> Meanwhile, we got a lot of stuff. We got the NCAA tournament, which we're talking with Final Four, but the Eastern Amazing. Regional Final is here in Philadelphia. I posted a picture of the floor at the Wells Fargo Center. The stench of the 76ers has left the city for a few days. <laughs> Thank God. And now they've got a beautiful new floor down. Did you see the floor at the Wells I, Fargo I Center? I saw the floor, and I also saw the ticket prices. Yes. Ooh, hello. Well, you know why the ticket prices are high? Because <laughs> these regional finals, the games will be Friday and Sunday here in Philly. Yeah. The other regions, the south where Villanova plays, that's Thursday and Saturday games. And then the Honda Center is also... Uh, Thursday and Saturday, but the Sweet 16, the East Regional here in Philadelphia, the Midwest in Chicago, those will be Friday and Sunday games. It's going to be great. And the games here in Philly will be Friday and Sunday as well. And the reason why the ticket prices are high, you've got Notre Dame here, right? Obviously a lot of fighting Irish fans. You've got uh, Wisconsin, whose coach is a Philly guy, right? Then you've got North Carolina, a number one seed, yeah. a very popular school. Well, everybody loves North Carolina. Everybody loves And then North the Indiana Carolina. Hoosers. Jordan. So you've got four pretty prominent programs, and that's why the ticket prices go up. You've got you know, the one seed, the five seed, the six and seven, and the amazing thing is the two, three, and four seeds have all been eliminated. Yep. Yeah, it's But the crazy. fact that Notre Dame and Indiana are here, and especially uh, Wisconsin, you know, with Bo Ryan's family and the great uh, coach at Wisconsin's got a long tradition with Wisconsin basketball. So going to be a big weekend here. Yeah, Vegas made out. Yeah. Made oh, yeah, everybody's pool week. was destroyed. In fact, all the ESPN has a second chance pool now with the what? Sweet 16. Yeah, my pool, I, I got into the ESPN pool. It's the only one I did. So many people were wiped out because of Michigan State and all the two seeds and the three seeds all losing that there was no intact pool. There were people who had, like, Kansas and Carolina. Oh, my Final Four is still intact. If your Final Four yeah. is in staff, but, but I'm talking about perfect brackets. No, the I ones, think... The once, million dollar brackets and right. the ten... They can make it $100 million and no one will ever have a perfect bracket. I think once Michigan State lost, I think they said only like 0.03% of perfect bracket, brackets still existed. Yeah, and they've that been wiped it. out. And, but then once Stephen F. Austin won, that was it. There was no more. Exactly. They were done. Because you, you, know, you had Utah lose and you had West Virginia lose and you had Seton Hall lose. And all the two seeds, two threes and fours, got wiped out. And so that's what happened. So now you see ESPN and a lot of other places have a Sweet 16 bracket only. So now you can get back into it and be in the Sweet 16 and make your picks online to try to have something to root for yeah. now that we're down to the Sweet 16. Because otherwise they're going to be concerned that the, uh, the, uh, the viewership is going to go down. No, nah, the viewership's not going to go no, down. People, no, people watch, but, the, but Robin's right, though. I mean, the main reason that the, the normal person watches is because they have their team still alive in Absolutely. the bracket. Oh, Nobody's got no. anybody left. No doubt about it. Last year had unbelievable. They had the highest ratings ever. Right. For the NCAA tournament. And I guarantee you, despite all the upsets, the ratings for this weekend with 13 first round upset, upsets were pretty good. People are watching this stuff. Even until Sunday night when St. Joe's was playing Oregon. That was a must watch game. That, 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 that was a great, game. great basketball that game. Was a great the one game. thing, though, with all these Cinderella, well, I don't even Cinderella's, with all these lower seeds winning, like these 13s, 14s, and 15s. I think it hurts the sport more than anything else because more often than not, the next game they play, they get routed. Right. Well, that's what's great about yeah. the NCAA tournament because it's a one and done. You yeah. better play well or you're done. Yeah, but look at Middle Tennessee. Middle Tennessee goes out there and, and knocks off Michigan State, who many people had in the Final Four, if not the I winning, the winning whole, at all. Right, winning the whole thing. But then they go out and they get their doors blown off by Syracuse in the next game. What I'm saying is that some of these, these higher-ranked teams, these 13, 14, 15s, if you get too many of them winning – it really weakens the tournament. It cheapens the tournament because, like, more often than not, in the second round game, they get their doors blown off. Yeah, but look at look at you got an eleven and ten matchup right in the Midwest in Chicago. You got Gonzaga and Syracuse. An eleven yeah, but seed against Gonzaga was seed. Gonzaga was kind of misseeded. They they should have been a little bit higher. I the agree. only reason Syracuse really had an easy entry in, right? But they shouldn't even have been in. Well, they're in, and now right. they, and they got in, but then, of it. right? But then they played Middle Tennessee and smoked them by twenty. What I'm saying is, is that. It's, that's it's, why it's a field of 64. That's why it's the best tournament out there, I believe. Right. It's just like the college football thing. Even though it's a stupid playoff system, you've got to win the game. You've got to win a couple of games, and you win it all. And so college basketball does it right. You know what? If you're not good enough, if you're not playing, you're not good enough to beat a – if you're a 15 seed and you beat a 2 seed, 
Too bad for the 15 seed. You got to no, be ready to play every single night. I don't mind seeing the 13 or 14 seed win every now and again. Like it's 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 good. It is good. But more often than not, they don't make a run. You're you're. I mean, Liberty comes like 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 Natalie said, Florida Gulf Coast uh, team like Liberty who knocks off. Remember uh, Liberty? It was 15 seed beat Duke. Yep. Um, you know, and they went on a nice little run. Uh, George Mason goes on a run. One one team, it's okay. But when you have three, four, five teams in a tournament doing that, it sucks for the but tournament. There's no, but we're in the Sweet 16, and the lowest seed is an 11. So you got an 11 and a 10. Those are, the, those are the best survivors, and they're two teams that were fortunate in their bracket to play teams that they beat. Right, That's but how it works. But don't you think the tournament would have been better? No, with, absolutely with, not. With Michigan State still alive to play in Iowa State? I mean, that's, you expect that competition to advance, but that's also what makes it so exciting is that they, that they don't make Would it, it have been better if Northern Iowa had not blown a 14-point lead in the last minute? No, no, no. I agree with these <laughs> teams being under. I'm just saying too many of them. Well, there aren't too many of them. Hurts the tournament. I don't think there are too many of them. That's just my opinion. Meanwhile, the NFL, a lot of stuff going on. Did you see the uh, changes in the rules? Automatic ejection now for a player who gets two personal fouls in the game. So that's new. Unsportsmanlike conduct I actually penalties. like that. And the touchback is going to move to the 25 instead of the 20. What? So next year, yeah, when a ball's kicked into the end zone and a player kneels down for a touchback, it will no longer go out to the 20. It goes out to the 25. So what does that say to you? They want more runbacks, right? Exactly. But, cause it, cause it, but they didn't want more runbacks because they didn't want guys getting hurt. That's, right. But now yeah, that's, what I, that's what I find interesting about yes. that rule is they're trying to make it safer. And, and then they do something like that. Because people got upset about the fact that every time the ball was kicked off, it was just going right to the back of the end zone. Yep. Right. And that was it. So now they're just trying to entice people to bring the ball out more. Because exactly. no, now they were worried about too much hitting, and now they're losing too much action. That's the problem. They're not seeing any, they're not seeing any returns. The only time you see a return is if somebody gets daring and wants to take it out from the back of the end zone. Exactly. Like and Darren Sproles. Like yeah, Darren exactly. Sproles. Exactly. <laughs> anyway, we got a lot of stuff. The NFL's so the touchback. That changed today. The chop block's been abolished. So defensive players are going to be happy. Offensive linemen won't be allowed to do any kind of chop blocks next season. That's Actually, huge. this is only a one-year experiment with all these rule changes. But to me, baseball is a different sport than any other sport. It's not like you know the Sixers are going to stink going into the season. Yeah. You know, it's not like you know, uh, like you don't know what the Flyers are going to do. At the beginning of the year, they had a new coach. It took them a long time. They finally started to gel, but it may be too little too late because they – lose a game that they blew with a 2 not two nothing lead late in the game and in overtime. They still could make the playoffs, but you didn't know what the Flyers were going to be. I feel you like the, the Flyers Sixers always were... have that late season push, though. February, March, they always come up and they always, yeah, but they're always they right were... on the doorstep. But they have then... a good future. See, I look at the Flyers, and they have some they have They're some in pieces. great hands. They have pieces now. They've got young players. This ghost kid is going to be a superstar. So they're finding some long, young players. They're getting rid of all the old guys. And then the Phillies are trying to do the same thing. The Sixers are trying to do the same thing, but they keep taking steps backwards. I mean, the Sixers have nine wins going into the game against Denver, a team that they've been able to beat. That's one of the few games you look at the schedule that they could win. You realize they have 11 games to go. If they lose out and lose the last 11 games, which is possible, which is, yeah. they would tie the 9-73 and 76ers team as the worst team in NBA history. Nine well, at least they'd win at something, right? Oh, no, they'd still tie. They would tie the they'd worst still record. Tie. They wouldn't even win that. But then remember, now, two years ago, the first year of the tank, they won 19 games, right? They were 19-63. Yeah. and 63. Last year, they won 18-64, and 64, so they lost. They won one less game, one fewer game. This year, with 11 games to go, they have nine wins. For them to equal last year's horrific 18-64 and 64 season, they would have to go 9-2, and two, right? Nine and yeah, two. Trust the process. Are they going to win nine of their last 11 games? F They've the won process. nine games Hell all year. No. Are they going to win nine of their last no. 11 games? No. For them to equal the 19 and 63 tank one, they'd have to go 10 and one. <laughs> tank one? Tank one. Tank one. As opposed to tank two electric boogaloo, which right. was last year. <laughs> right. 19 and 63 to finish with a record. They're not going to win 12 games. That's so pitiful. They're not going to win 12. And I, w- I was one of those people who said, that there's no way they don't win 20 games. It's almost impossible not to win 20 games in the NBA. What do you think the process people are going to do when this is an epic failure? They're going to come back next year. Blow their hope. heads off. They're going to, One they're more going to, year? They're going to wait for the draft. They're going to hope Ben Simmons is the, is the player. The future. And then they're going to come back next year and hope Embiid, who now has had his surgery postponed so he can have some time off. The guy's had two years off. Is he still riding around on his funky dog? I don't know. I mean, listen, I want to see the Sixers win more than anybody. But if anybody thinks nine and 62 
this juncture of the season is some sort of progress. I know they got guys hurt. Everybody's got guys hurt. But 9-62? and 62? I mean, how is that possible? How's that possible? It's not possible. They went on a tear to get a couple wins after they picked up Ish Smith, remember? They were sitting yep. on one win forever. They were 1-30. and 30. Then they get Ish Smith and they win. They get up to like five wins. Well, they had Ish Smith to begin with, and they were too good with Ish Smith and trade him away. They trade away two of their valuable second-round draft picks. And then they, they win like five. They get to five wins. And people are going, oh, my God, it's cool, it's cool, it's calm down. <laughs> And now they're sitting with nine stinking wins. It's sad. It's so pitiful. It is. It is. It's, it's so pitiful. I don't, it's I'm, listen, painful. I've been around it's, here my whole life. The saddest, the saddest state of be, like, being a Philadelphia sports fan right now is that every single team is in the process of rebuilding. Every single team. It's like you, you go into the season and you're like, well, you know, we might do good. We might do this. But we're rebuilding. It's like. How long do you give the rebuild until you start winning? Rebuilding. I am We're pretty re- pissed off. There's yeah. difference about rebuilding. They're like when you see somebody rebuild a team rebuilding, you're like, okay, I understand. But but what the Sixers are doing right now, it's beyond pathetic. It's not rebuilding. It's this not is, rebuilding. This is not rebuilding. They're purposefully doing this, and that is something that just. Anybody They're not that purposely has, picking guys who get hurt. Well, they are purposely picking guys who got hurt because that's who they wind up with because they don't get the top pick. Who has any kind of sportsmanship? Hey, that was my word tonight. Would feel it just makes you sick. Like it doesn't even make me want to feel anything for the Sixers right now. Well, I feel I feel as you know a fan of all four teams that I'm just so. What about the Union though? They got to win in their opening game. They, I mean, I don't. Oh, they got two soccer, wins already. I'm not a big soccer fan. People get mad at me for that, but I don't really care about soccer. Luigi, he's all. a big Union fan, right? No. No. No, I meant the uh, the Teamsters. No. No, that, that was great. <laughs> no, none. He has his rat. I meant Not the, yeah. Uh, I have an inflatable rat. That's, that's, me everywhere now. That's his furry costume, isn't that's it? His, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Luigi goes out as the yeah. inflatable yeah. rat. Luigi was who should do. No, but I mean, it's, 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 I almost go into the season blindly optimistic because it's like, hey, anything can happen. Well, so they I, did. I know <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> Chip Kelly was asked if he was responsible for the DeMarco Murray signing and the signing of Byron Maxwell. And you know he what Chip that. Kelly said? No, nope. he said it was Howie that did it. And then Howie was asked about it, and he didn't deny it. So everybody blamed Chip Kelly for DeMarco Murray and Byron Maxwell. Chip Kelly flat out said that that wasn't his call, that Howie Roseman said to do it. Yeah, but... but so why would Howie deny it then? It's not about, it's not about denying it. It's, it's that Chip said, Chip said, go get me these guys. It doesn't, it doesn't matter what, what they want, go get them. And Howie's like, okay, well, you're going to have to end up overpaying for them, but if that's what you want, that's what you're going to get. So who made the final call on getting them? Howie absolutely made okay. the final call. But at the same time, that's what the GM wanted. How do you do that from the equipment closet? I don't know. That's a good question. He wasn't. He had it out. He had I don't know. Ask the trusters. They know. They know. <laughs> he was just in the other wing. I know. Anyway, it, it doesn't matter, does it, at this point? No. It's funny. People are, st- people are frustrated that we're still talking about Chip. But, I mean, he, it, well, the you know media what? You know won't let it die for him. talking about in this city in a couple of months? Andy Reid again. You know why? Because it's his guy. Exactly. Because we live said, in the past in this I, town. I said, I said it's like full circle. So Chip got rid of Andy's guys, and then Andy's guy got rid of Chip's guys. It's just like we're just going in this vicious and now, cycle. And now, yeah, and now and Andy's guy is back Andy's in Philly. Andy's guy is back. So anytime there's a clock management situation, oh, it's they're going to compare the guy to Chip. Fault. He's going to say, see, Andy Reid, here's what happened. But when Peterson was quarterback's coach here under Reid, I, mean, he I mean, he had records. So you kind of feel good about that, but it's just like this, you're working with Sam Bradford and Chase Daniel. They might have a, they might, there might actually be some sort of, I don't know, some competition. I'm trying to stay positive here now. So I said I 77 Luigi. wins for Lu- the Phillies, and everybody booed me. No, go ahead. Oh, okay. Luigi <laughs> thinks everybody's going to lose. Yeah, I was going to say. Hey, how do you Luigi? know, Luigi? I bet you I've been a, to the mall. <laughs> I bet you there's a fairy manatee somewhere. No, I bet you there's not. I right. will bet you there's not. All right, well, i got a few minutes no to kill No fairy dolphins, so. no fairy anything. Yeah, there's no fairy dolphins. I'll tell you who's not a furry. Is Max Major. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's great to have him back in Philly. Now he's here for an extended run. His show was so successful at the Franklin Institute. He's, he's won Entertainer of the Year. He's won all these great awards. Three times. Washington, Three times in Washington, D.C., where he lives. He's a mentalist. He's called the mystifying mentalist. Max Major, ladies and gentlemen, back here in the house. How are you, man? I'm going to get him plugged in here. See, he can't do that telepathically. No. Or uh, mentally. Or, or hypnotically or anything else. How are you, man? Unfortunately, it has to be done manually. Right. Robin, are you touching his butt or are you just trying to snap it on? I just wanted an excuse to touch him. <laughs> right. 
<laughs> I'll deal you a card. And in your head, literally, just think of a random card. Okay, don't say anything out loud, but just Did get one Did you just get mind. one to Luigi you up there? You got one as well. Okay. 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 Not the Ace of Spades. That'd be a little too obvious. Okay. All right, get a random card in mind. Okay. And then put your poker face on. Ready? Like my Lady Gaga poker yeah, face? That works for me. <laughs> yeah. Let me see. Okay, she's ready. All right, everybody's ready. Here we go. Tony, look at me. Imagine you could see your card here, just floating in midair. Mm -hmm. And imagine the way that it looks, the way that it's laid out. In the corner here, picture the number or the letter. Mm -hmm. and in the middle, that club, heart, spade, or diamond. See it in your mind, the way that it looks. Good. Robin, I got something else for you. I'll try this with you. Imagine your card here, Natalie. <laughs> Always, Robin. Picture the number in the corner. Imagine the way it's laid out. Good. You actually play cards? Mm -hmm. You do? Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, I have a deck of cards That's here. so funny. She's trying not to smile. I'm going to pull one card out. Yeah. Before you guys say anything, I really will commit to one card. Okay. Okay? okay. You can't change your mind, though. I'm going to turn this over, and we're going to leave this right here on the table upside down. Okay? Mm -hmm. If that one card that I just turned over and placed down there is the card inside of your head, would that be pretty interesting? Yes, it would. It would? Well, in the spirit of poker... All right, we're not taking our clothes off, but uh, Robin, I will put a little money on the line. All right, if I miss this, you guys split my cash, or I'll donate it to the uh, the you prize. Donate box. the prize box. All right, and there's okay. over there's six hundred dollars in that box, approximately. All right, it's about to be like three more. <laughs> three hundred, uh, three dollars. Okay. <laughs> Tony, for the first time, what was the card you thought of? Say it out loud. Seven of spades. Seven of spades. Straight away, seven of spades. Yes. And what was yours? Queen of hearts. Queen of hearts. I said I'd get back to yours, but seven of spades. Yeah. Look, I'm going to do this very slowly. I'm going to go through here. You're going to see that there's just the one card. All right? Facing the opposite direction of every other card you see at first. See it right there? Mm -hmm. It's the only one. It's not like I turned over 20 cards. Yeah? Yeah. Tony, yeah. what is the card that I turned over? Check it out. Oh. Are you serious? <laughs> Seven of spades. Damn. There it is. What the? I How know. How did he do that? He's a witch, man. He He's is. a witch. We already determined this last time. <laughs> Although I think technically the term is warlock for now. Man. Okay, we did not work. I didn't talk to Max. He came in no, here right he before the show. No, he was late. He was late because of the traffic. There was no chance to even say hi beforehand. Yeah, you know, last time I was on the show, a lot of people said, uh, "Oh, we must have discussed something. We must have but set it didn't. up." And it no. wasn't set up. But this time, to be clear, I didn't ask any of you to play nope. along. Nope. I didn't ask you to, to make decisions before we went on the air. This is all happening right now for the first time. Yes. It's very important because, uh, Natalie, I asked you to think of a card as well. And before you ever named your card out loud, I set my wallet down on the table. Now, be honest, Tony. I haven't touched that wallet since she said Queen of Hearts. Yet. That is correct. That yeah, is because correct. inside of here, I, I actually have a lucky card. Are you? Yeah, inside the wallet. Look, I'll show you. There's one card. It's not just any card. What is it, Natalie? Say it out loud. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Queen of Hearts. <laughs> Is that unbelievable or what? That's, cr that's killer. That is crazy. That is crazy. Who, ca who carries a queen of hearts in her wallet? <laughs> See, I have, of course I have a lucky card. Exactly. Oh, right? So you, tell me you look no up in the there, dictionary the about mentalist, and in it it says something about this thing about how they, they take bodily cues and they pick up on facial expressions. There is absolutely no facial expression or body cue that she could have made or Tony could have exactly. made. Exactly. Forget much. about knowing the card. Knowing the card is one thing. Knowing the card and having it be the only card face down, everything else is faced up. Or in his or, wallet. Or have the one card in the wallet. That's the part that is beyond bizarre. Wait, that's so crazy. Right? Because, you know, I've seen a million choice, card tricks. Yeah. yeah. That was your choice? Yeah. The free choice? That's sort of the question, right? When something like that happens, when undeniably the wallet is sitting there in front of you and it's the only card inside, it makes you wonder, was that your decision or was it my decision? We talked the last time, you were a sports fan, so you're... A Washington, now, the Washington Capitals is going to win the Stanley Cup because they had a pretty good year. Their season. Are you asking for a prediction? I'm asking for a prediction now. Official Ooh. prediction? Ooh, Ooh yes. He does. Oh, what? They'll blow it in the playoffs. Live on they air. will. Oh. They will. They'll blow in the yes. playoffs. Now, I saw you did a couple of things posts. on a Washington radio station. <laughs> yeah. Where you went in there and actually predicted the final score. Of a big, was it the Final Four game? What was it? Okay, it, was, yeah. it was March Madness. This I've, done a, I've done a lot of live uh, sports predictions. I did uh, a Thursday night football game. The Ravens Steelers delivered the envelope. They held on to it. He delivered the um, envelope yeah. before the game was played well, with the final score. Absolutely. 
we're springing this on you, I know. Yeah, but so if typically you could do I it, do weeks and weeks of research leading into these things. Uh, if you're asking me right now to make my Washington Capitals Stanley Cup prediction. I do that too, but I, I lose. I will say, sadly, <laughs> as much as I'm a Capitals fan, it, it ain't happening this year. Who's going to so. win the Cup, do you know? Uh, further research is required. Okay, okay. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it's, not like, it's not like you're going to automatically know the final score, and if you don't get it right when someone yeah, asks yeah. you on demand, that you're not doing Do you know anything doing... about Sam Bradford? <laughs> <laughs> now, Creskin was technically kind of... a mentalist. Creskin yes. was a mentalist. The amazing James Randy. Yeah, yeah, James Randy. Isn't he, was like, a supposed to be in Philly here coming up? Creskin? This month, maybe? He's still performing. Yeah, yeah. he is. Yeah. I think we had him on the show. We didn't have him physically on the show. We had him on the have phone. Have you ever met him? I have not. I if have you not. ever get a chance to meet him, that man, I, I think it's partly because of who he is and what he does. Uh huh. But there's just something that makes him feel like he's your long lost uncle. Right. He's just the most amazing. Ama- that's well, that's why he's why the amazing Kreskin. Yeah. He's, <laughs> he's, like, like I talk- he's not going to call himself the amazing Kreskin if he's I not talk amazing. I call himself the OK Kreskin. <laughs> <laughs> he's a so so. Okay. <laughs> so so. He's all right, Kreskin. <laughs> <laughs> but no, seriously, I good. talked to him like maybe twice before the show. <laughs> the damn good crash kid, you know? And yeah. I felt like I like he he knew me my entire yeah. life. Plus he's Sicilian. I didn't even know that. He's actually got he's got two, but it's in California in, in oh, um man. in April. Oh, okay. okay. And he canceled both of them. He did? Oh, yeah. oh I hope he's okay. I don't know. But he's uh he's a mentalist and I he's been a mentalist forever and, and yeah. the amazing Randy. And so I can't believe once again, Natalie. You had not heard of the term the mentalist before tonight? No, not Even really. the TV show? Mentalism. Yeah. You never saw the TV show The Mentalist? I don't watch much TV. I don't know. <laughs> well, you can follow him on Twitter at It's Max Major. All one word. It's Max Major. M-A-X-M-A-J-O-R. MaxMajor.net. At the Franklin, which is the Franklin Institute site. To get tickets, you go to the Franklin Institute site. Yeah. Because it's a long Twitter hand. It's a long email yeah. address, right? Yeah, or if right? you just go to maxmajor.net, that you can click right through to the Franklin website. Which is website, much easier. That's way that's easier than easy, yeah. navigating through their site. So. You're really an and, amazing guy. And man. we will be giving the tickets away on Twitter um, tomorrow after the show is posted online. Okay. So then we're going to pick a winner out tomorrow? Correct. So who do we follow on Twitter? Me? Yes. At Tony Bruno Show? At Tony Bruno you got to be Show. following Tony. At Miss Robin Austin. And you can follow at It's Max Major, too. Yeah. But he's not going to give you free tickets, though. Unless he does his own contest, I which he does a lot. I give to you, yes. and then you give them to them. Exactly. exactly right. that? Beautiful. Yeah, we hump these things, not him. Yeah. Max, great to see you again, man. Thanks for coming by. Hey, it was by. fun. Amazing. You're Next amazingly time, talented big guy. After the show. So big is there production. anything, any parting, parting shots that you want to make as we go out? No, I don't tell you. That's Luigi's job to take parting shots. I want to thank everybody for coming out tonight. I know a lot of issues out there with traffic and stuff, but I want to thank all the great people who came out to Comedy Sports here in Philly. Luigi Curto up there in the God Mike at Luigi Curto 22. Follow him on Twitter at jcarado19. Not here tonight, but here in spirit. And, of course, the great Nathaniel. Nathaniel Dotson. Follow him at Tutvid. He's our great videographer. He has amazing videos on his YouTube channel. Of course, remember earlier we had the great... Max Major, follow him. It's Max Major on Twitter, and his website is Max Blew Major. And go to his show. Again. Go to his Amazing. show. Man. Yeah, go to MaxMajor.net, and then you get all the information on upcoming shows, and you can order tickets there at the Franklin Institute for his upcoming shows the next couple of months here in Philly. And everybody who came out, and of course all the folks here at Comedy Sports, every Saturday night, two shows, the longest-running comedy show in Philadelphia here at the Adrian Theater. And Miss Robin Austin, follow her, of course, at Miss Robin Austin, at Natalie Eganall. A O L F is how it ends. O L F. O L F. E E N O L F. E G E N O L F. E G E N O L F. Yes. But people say Eganoff and they don't realize there's an L in there. True. You leave the last L in there yes. for savings. In the meantime, <laughs> and of course, uh, who else did I say? Did I forget anybody? That's everybody. That's everybody. We'll see you next week. Be careful out there. We're going to be live in Houston at Nick's place next Thursday night on March 31st. In the meantime, don't drink and drive, don't text and drive, and God bless America. It's a beautiful country.